Okay, so here's the one. This is the one piece that absolutely kills me in this whole video. This, the causes behind the nightmare will never be eliminated, but they can be reduced by putting gun policies and practices in place that uphold the constitutional rights of American citizens first rather than those of the Second Amendment gun absolutist. All right, guys, KB32 here, check in. And we're sitting over here in the uh, Freedom Office. Last night, I put out a video, and uh, I guess what we did is we took a rifle and we put as much junk on it as we possibly could. Now, are these items necessary? Are they needed or what? So you define the mission and you go ahead and you apply whatever items you need for that specific mission to the rifle. Maybe a little overkill. A lot of people have some real answers. And uh, yeah, we're going to take a different lower. We're going to put on that thing, see what the overall length is. But people didn't recognize the LWRC uh, stock and the buffer tube are about two inch and a half, two inches shorter. So it makes up for the distance of that law tactical, uh, what do you call folding adapter. So let's do this. We're going to, anyway, that video will come out as well this week. We're going to be doing some range testing, 77 grain. I'm going to take the Sierra Match Kings from AAC. We're going to test those through the rifle, see how, what the accuracy level is on the competition rifle. And we're going to take out that Rock Island Armory and see if we can get it to run halfway decent. But in any case, uh, we've been invited to a three-gun event, and I'm just going to leave it at that, that I watched it, and it reminds me of going through Ranger School. So, <laughs> oh yeah, this is going to be fun. All right, so what are we talking about here? This is an interesting article that I found on the interweb uh, from the Hindustan Time, and I think it's Hindustan Times, because uh, for the most part, they are talking about stories uh, globally. Uh, but this guy is from the States, which is interesting. But it is uh, the lax gun control in the US is birthing a tragedy. Okay, so what? why do, uh, these individuals on the left side think the way they do. This is partially because they're halfway being lied to. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is an article by a guy named Frank F. Islam. It was authored on May 28, 2003, 23. All right, Irushka, many others, unsuspecting victims of how unfortunately become an American pastime, gun violence. Okay, so this is a guy who's saying that and what it is, they're trying to paint a picture. They're trying to be emotional about it. They're trying to create some kind of extraordinary events that just are out of the ordinary. I tell you what's out of the ordinary is if you got rid of half the gangbangers in New York or Chicago and Philadelphia, it probably cut, oh, I don't know, gun crime in half. Uh, yeah, America's, tra right, so let's go on. America's tragic obsession with guns came close to home for Indians this month. I don't know why the hell they're doing that when high, all right, so this is evidently, like I said, an international thing, okay. Uh, Hyderabad born Irishwa Thatikanda was killed by a white supremacist in Texas. The 26-year-old was the second Indian to lose her life to gun violence in Texas in the past 14 months. Um, Okay, gun violence. It, you know what? You can't walk out of your house anymore without thinking somebody's going to take your life. In March 2022, John Diaz, 27, was killed in the Houston area in 2017. Indian technology professional Sarivaz Kuchibatala uh, was killed in a bar in Oloth, Kansas. The killer, who shouted racial slurs and demanded that Kuchibukadala and his friend Alak Matasani, man, who survived the attack, get out of my country, is serving a life sentence. Yeah. Uh, Tatikanda, Diaz, and Kuchibatla were unsuspecting victims of what has now, unfortunately, become an American pastime, gun violence. Okay, so stop it. Stop it with that BS, dude. Uh, I can't stand it when these guys paint this picture. And he's going to go on to just throwing out stats that are absolute BS, okay? Uh, here we go. Uh, according to the Gun Violence Archive, I don't even know who that is, okay? Between January 2016 and December 2022, more than 122,000 Americans died due to willful, malicious, or accidental gun violence. Okay, so let me ask you a question. First of all, what is accidental gun violence? Uh, somebody has an accident in a car. Do they call that car violence? Uh, no. When the dude ran over all those people in a parade, do they call that car violence? Uh, even though mass shootings have risen substantially in the recent years, what, what that has a lot to do with what the hell do they consider a mass shooting? I think it's, what, three or more at this point in time? Uh, that's your typical drive-by shooting in, in Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, apart from the public outcry and expressions of grief, little has been done to curb this terminal epidemic. 
Well, what has been done is no cash bail, right? Let's let these sucker bitches out and let them do whatever the hell they want. This is the stuff that fires me up. This is the stuff that I absolutely can't stand. And this guy's painting a picture like, oh, everything, we all gonna die. You know what? You don't do something about your dumb life. Yes, you may. Today, there is less regulation of assault weapons than there was two decades ago. And Americans own more firearms than ever before. Now, explain to me what less regulations there are other than, I don't know, maybe the ban. They had the assault weapons ban, and now there's none. And the reason there is none is because they couldn't find any reason why not to just let it go into the sunlight. This shift occurred as a major federal law. The federal assault weapons ban was allowed to lapse in 2004. Then several states under Republican control, along with conservative judges, facilitated easier access to firearms, even without background checks. Now, what the hell is he talking about here, ladies and gentlemen? <sighs> Private sales, maybe. I don't know. Oh, the gun show loophole. Is that what they're talking about, where you can go to a gun show and just buy as many guns as you want without any kind of background checks? Mmm, what a big-ass lie. Oh, my God. It's just absolutely sickening the way these things people think. Uh, efforts to replace legislation have been thwarted by the influential gun lobby, the NRA and its GOP allies. Ooh, the evil NRA. NRA. Besides the NRA's political power, there are many reasons for lack of prog progress and increasing gun safety, which has put gun control in a state of suspended animation. Okay, so this is where this shit's about to get real, folks, okay? And if you're still with me, let me know what your thoughts are down below after you hear what I'm getting ready to say. The common defense for not tightening gun regulation is that the problem is not guns, but the people with mental illness issue using them inappropriately. Uh, pretty much. They're called criminals. They're idiots. They're assholes. People out there going around shooting people. Easy, soft targets. This is not the gun's fault. This is the people's fault. And part of the problem is this soft on crime bullshit. You know what? If you go and you shoot up a school and you're caught alive, the next day you should be hung. And slow hung with a piano wire. Because that's the fucking piece of shit you are. And excuse my French, ladies and gentlemen. Opponents also argue that any such law would deprive them of the Second Amendment rights. Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry. I know we could drop, go without dropping abs, ass bombs, but this is the kind of jackass that really kills me. This is a resistance born of either ignorance or arrogance. Because the amendment was established for one reason only. Okay, so this is this guy's ignorance. This is what people think. You've got a big old picture of Gabby Gifford. You've got Bloomberg. You've got all these new town for Moomot Moms for New Moms for Demand Action Now. <sighs> the only reason. Reason only. Okay, to protect an individual's right to a weapon to serve as part of a state's militia. This is opinion, Jackass. This is not what the Supreme Court decided. Holy smokes, Mr. Islam. For more than half a century, the NRA and the related gun rights groups have been central to appropriating and broadening the social and legal narrative about the purpose of the Second Amendment. And by the way, guys, I'm on my second pot of coffee. This was my mom's uh, coffee mug. It's very dear to my heart. <laughs> the GOP's conversion to gun absolutism is the heart of the problem. But politics doesn't happen in a vacuum. It often follows from cultural and moral innovations. For roughly more than four decades, American conservatism has identified firearms as a marker of manly rejection. What? Of urban cosmopolitanism and gun ownership as a right more important than any other. Mm, I don't even know what to say to that one. What do you think? Let me know. Another significant setback in the effort to curb gun violence occurred in June 2022 when the Supreme Court decided to expand citizens' right to carry firearms for self-defense and restricted the use of enhancing public safety as the purpose of a gun law. Don't even know what he's talking about. In recent years, there has been a consensus among the public that there is a need for stronger gun control measures. Okay, so when everybody, I've seen all these articles, most Americans agree, more gun control. Most, what is, what, uh, what is most? Uh, the majority, uh, when you have like a 48, 49% kind of a deal right there. So what he's, uh, okay. The majority, the most of the Americans agree that more gun control. Mm, mm, mm. 
Uh, where was I? Okay. Uh, in recent years, there has been a consensus among the public that there needs to be stronger gun control measures. However, this attitude is more than offset by the influence of the NRA. Who the hell's influencing? Uh, wait a minute. Why? Who? Uh, uh, I'm speechless. The NRA is influencing everybody that we're not going to go anywhere near this. The dramatic increase in gun sales. No, the dramatic increase in gun sales is because... This guy named Biden was elected, and we know how anti-gun he is, so everybody's going out to get the guns before he tries to ban every single one of them, which he has weaponized the uh, uh, ATF in order to do this. They're trying to make you illegal. Almost everything you have, the pistol brace, all of that stuff, uh, and the attitudes of new gun owners. All right, so uh, we're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Gun sales have gone up in most states, but most especially in the provinces. Provinces. What the hell's a province? We don't have any. Do we have provinces here in, in our country, the United States? This thing with the Second Amendment that this jackass doesn't understand, unless there is some specific national legislation when it comes to gun rights, the states' law, state laws dominate. This means that moving the needle on assault weapons and other major gun safety-related issues must be done at the national level. All right. <laughs> According to the GVA, all right, we talked about that earlier, the same weekend Tata and Kanye was killed, there was additional six shootings that took place across the United States and pushing the total number of mass shootings in 2020-23 to more than 200. Okay, so just the other day on The View, whatever that lady's name is, she's like saying 145 to the governor of Connecticut or Massachusetts or New Haven. I don't know where the hell he's from. Well, anyway... Where did he get the 200 from? They're blasting numbers. These ignorant any idiots, they're just blasting numbers. This means in the U.S. in 2023, virtually every day was a mass shooting. Like I said, if you want to get rid of these so-called mass shootings, go ahead and take out the gangbangers. Go after the people who are causing trouble. Put them in jail and leave them in jail. Let them rot. Yet, no. You got these assholes. Nobody's going after these gangbangers because, oh, I guess they have their rights or more than my Second Amendment right. Is that true? Uh... Yeah, it is an American nightmare that must be confronted. Okay, so here's the one. This is the one piece that absolutely kills me in this whole video. This, The causes behind the nightmare will never be eliminated, but they can be reduced by putting gun policies and practices in place that uphold the constitutional rights of American citizens first rather than those of the Second Amendment gun absolutist. When that is done, everyone will be safer. There's a reason the Second Amendment was after the First Amendment, and that was to keep the First Amendment safe. Because the minute you take our firearms, just like they're trying to do right now, and I'm not an absolutist, man. I know that we got an issue, and I know we got a problem. What can you do about it? Right? But this guy's on crack, and this is these are the people that we have to prevent from voicing an opinion because their opinions suck. So anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. This is a video that just, I saw this article and I had to respond to it. It was something that I absolutely could not stand. Uh, this guy is an entrepreneur, civic leader, and a thought leader based in Washington, D.C. And the views expressed here are personal. And I said, okay, I'm going to put the link to his article down below. I'm not sure if you can make any comments on it. No, they don't give you that ability. But that's it. With that being said, guys. This is what we're going up against. This is the mentality. These people don't think that the Second Amendment is an actual right. And anyone who has a firearm is a potential criminal and a mute murderer in the future. <laughs> With that being said, guys, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedoms. Freedom is not free. KB32, and I am out of here. Boom. Damn, brother. Let's have another cup of coffee.